Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Linode API with Python. Now, what we're gonna do, just to keep it simple, to introduce you to the Linode API is to create and deploy a new virtual private server instance uh, via Python. So um, there is an official version of the Linode API, and you can see that here at GitHub. It is version four of the Linode API. And what we're gonna do is um, install that and then go through some of the steps that you need to do in order to uh, deploy a new virtual private server instance or IE a Linode. Um, before we can do any of that, we need to get an API token. So I'm logged in here to my Linode dashboard. You can see I have um, three production servers running right now, um, but in order to get the API key, let's go into your, section, your uh, profile section up here, click on API tokens, and by default, you don't have any, so let's create a personal access token. And you can call this whatever we want. I'll just say demo, and um, you can have it expire in a certain amount of time or never, if you want that to be the case. Uh, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll have mine expire never and give it all permissions. So we'll create that token. And what it does is it gives you this random string with letters and numbers. Um, this is your API token. You wanna copy that and Keep it safe, don't share it with anybody, um, but this is the only time you're gonna see it, so make sure you write that down or copy it somewhere. Okay, so I have that on my clipboard. I'm gonna put it in my notes over here on the other screen, and we're good to go. So now we can get into the Python stuff. Um, let's go back to my Linode dashboard because we will see as we work through, interact with what's on here and adding new Linode servers. So what I'm gonna do is open up a terminal window Make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see what's going on. And check what version of Python I'm running. So Python-V, I got Python 3.8.5. So as long as you're using a modern version of Python, um, I think you should be able to interact with the API. Um, let's go ahead and install the package. So we're gonna do that with pip install Linode API 4. So this makes it really easy um, to uh, to get all of the functionality through a pip Python package. So we got that now and we can open up our Python shell just by typing Python. So now everything at this point that we type is going to need to be a Python uh, command or I should say py Python code. All right, so um, what we're gonna do first is, and I'm just gonna copy off screen so I don't make any syntax errors here. From the Linode API, which we just installed via pip, import Linode client, okay? And that looks good. And what we wanna do basically is to define our token. So this is what I copied from earlier. So our token as a string, define that variable, and then instantiate the Linode client with that token. So that's what this, this syntax is right here. So we're gonna give that uh, to the client variable. Now, with the client variable, um, we can look at our current instances by looking, uh, doing something like client.linode.instances. And it's honestly not too helpful other than the fact that it says we currently have three instances. And you can see that if we look in the background, we have three production servers over here. Um, but in order to you know, dig into those instances and get some more information about them, let's just, let's just make a variable called my linodes and uh, assign that to the output here. So we have a my Linodes instance and let's do my, let's just look at the first instance, my Linodes. This is why I can't type <laughs> um, the first element in that uh, list, right? And it just gives us an instance ID. Now, what do we do at this point? Well, we can look at the, the dictionary for this um, class, this instance class, and we'll see all the different um, attributes that are associated with this. So one in particular that I'm interested in, just to, and again, this is just demonstrating uh, some of the ways to interact with the API, is the label here, okay? So if we would do something like um, the first element in this list dot label, we'll see that is micro domain. So if we wanted to get all of your current Linode instances, uh, you can create a list comprehension that looks something like this. And if you're not familiar with list, list comprehensions, this is basically like a one line if statement. So for every 
item in your my Linodes variable, let's pull out the label. So that's what that means for every for i in my Linodes i dot label. And what that's going to do do is just create a list of all the labels for our instances. And you can see micro domains, the diamond app, and oh it is, which correspond up here to our production servers. Okay, so now that we are a little bit more comfortable with working with the API, um, let's deploy a Linode instance from Python. And in order to do that, we need three pieces of information. We need to know where we want the, the instance to de be deployed to physically, like in a physical data center somewhere. We need to know what operating system we want the instance to run on and what plan um, we want the instance. So do we want it to be a Nanode, a Linode, how many, how much RAM, CPU cores, all that stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and figure out what the API is expecting as far as those, those values are concerned. So we can do that, again, we have our client variable. So we can do client dot uh, images to see what are our available images. And this is where it gets a little frustrating. They always give you a paginated, paginated list um, back. So what we're typically, whoops, what we're typically going to do is assign that to a variable and then look at the options. So uh, we'll say available images is the output of that, and then we'll do, we'll do a for loop. So for each image in available images, let's just print it out to the screen here, and hit enter. And these are all the different images that are available. So um, you got CentOS, Debian, different versions of Fedora. Uh, Ubuntu. What I'm interested in is this one right here. Um, so I'm going to copy that and assign that to an image variable. So image equals a string called Linode slash Ubuntu 20.04. Okay, so now let's pick the type of Linode that we're interested in. We can do that with client, CLI, our client variable, our object dot Linode dot types. And again, we get that list. So let's say available types equals that and then we can do the same type of for loop to print those out on the screen and these are all of your options so you can pick whatever you'd like I'm just gonna keep the standard nano down here and just like we did above we'll say type equals the one that we want and then the one last thing that we need is where we want the Leno to be deployed so we'll say client.regions to get the list of available regions and we'll assign that to available regions. And then we'll loop over that. Um, and this time we'll do something different. We'll do a list comprehension. Um, so instead of doing the for loop, we'll just make a list of all those regions. And there we go. So we have West, Central, Southeast, US, Central, South, Europe. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to pick US Central here, uh, right here, US Central. And then I'll say that is my region. So I'll make a region variable equals that. Okay, so we have everything that we need to deploy a new Linode. Let's go ahead and deploy the new Linode. So um, I'm definitely going to copy this so I don't make any syntax mistakes. But uh, I'll explain it to you because it's a little bit of code here. So let's focus on this. So our client object, we're going to uh, call the create instance or instance create. Um, we're going to give it some parameters. So the type that we defined up top was the, the nanode up here. The region was um, US Central. And then this, this parameter here, image, we're going to give it the image variable. And then the label, this can be whatever you want. I'm going to say hello from Python. And the output of this command is going to be two, it's going to give us two pieces of output. So it's going to give us a new Linode instance object and the password for SSH logins for the root user. Um, so let's go ahead and execute that, see what we get back here. It'll take a couple seconds, there we go. So first off, let's look at the password and actually let's uh, refresh the background to see this happen in real time. So we can see now this is booting up our new instance, hello from Python in US Central Dallas, Texas. It's a nanode with one gigabyte and here's our IP address. But I'll show you how to get the IP address programmatically. Um, let's take a look at the password first here. We have this really strong password. Uh, so I'm going to copy that down for reference in the future, very, very soon to be future. And then, um, let's, let's take a look at our new Linode object. So 
by default, again, that doesn't help us too much, but if we want to see what type of attributes are associated with this, we can use dict, D-I-C-T. And um, what I'm interested in is the IP address. So let's see if we can find that here. Here we go, IPv4. So 4533113189. So with that information, um, you can pull that out programmatically if you would like to, like by indexing into this this object here. Um, but I'm going to copy that here. And then what we're going to do is exit out of our terminal session or, or exit out of our Python shell session and then see if we can log in with the credentials that we found. So um, SSH root at the IP address. Hit enter. Uh, do you want to continue connecting? Yes. And then the password, uh, I did copy it off screen, but just so we're explicit, let's copy the password here paste it in, hit enter, and now we are connected to that remote Linode VPS server that we just created via Python, and that is exactly corresponding to this Linode right here. So um, guys, I hope that was valuable as far as a good brief introduction into the Linode API. As you can probably guess, this is a very powerful thing to be able to deploy on demand VPS instances and interact with them in a automated fashion. So um, please let me know if you have any comments in the questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. I got some more videos about Linode and interacting with APIs for VPSs over here if you want to check those out. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.